Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be jumping back into Mixamo and then into Unity because it's time to start setting up our zombie. But before we can have a zombie attack or a zombie horde, we need one zombie. So in Mixamo, let's go to our characters tab and pretty self-explanatory, let's search for zombie. Now you can see we actually have a pretty decent variety of zombie-like characters. Now some of these actually don't look very zombie-like, but others do, and you can really kind of pick freely uh, which version of a zombie you want to use. I'm gonna go with the classic Romero zombie. Pretty standard looking zombie, which will be perfect for our purposes. Now you can just download it like this today, or if you want, you can go to animations, and you can start to look for some of the animations that you're going to need. I don't want you to spend too much time on this today because today you don't really need an animation, but if you were gonna get one, well, we're still searching by zombie right here, which is actually pretty helpful because you can see we're getting zombie specific animations. So when your zombie attacks, we have this kind of sloppy stumbling attack or when they're walking, they're also kind of stumbling around, not moving like a nimble ninja or a military soldier in a crouch run or something like that. You'll also notice that there's a couple of packs up here these packs have more animations than we need and will take up a lot of space on your computer. So I would actually recommend just going and finding specifically which animations you want. For today, I'll just do an idle pose, which again, we're not even gonna really use this yet, but since I'm downloading him, I might as well get an idle animation for him as well. Definitely want to say with skin, otherwise you'd be getting just the animation. And what we really want right here is the zombie model. So we're gonna keep with skin on. We don't need to change any of these other settings clicking download. And as soon as this little loading bar is done, we'll be getting him into Unity, and then we're going to get him moving around and chasing the player. Now, once this is done, you can see it in the bottom left over here. One of the easiest ways to get to it is just to click on this arrow and click show in Finder. But of course, you can always just open your Finder and go to your downloads and it'll be right there. So now I'm going to pull up Unity and get my Finder window back real quick. And you can see this is kind of my uh, sandbox. Not talking about the scene, but down here. So why don't I make a new folder to help keep me organized and you understanding exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to make a new zombie stuff folder. And here in new zombie stuff, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in from my downloads folder, this model and animation of the zombie. Okay, so here you can see in my new zombie stuff folder, I have my zombie. I'm gonna go get a little bit closer to my character, my FPS controller. And I'm going to just drag and drop in my zombie right here. And let's go test plate and just give this a quick look. All right, so there he is, there's my zombie. Just kind of frozen in place, not looking like anything special right now. The model's good, but he's not moving, he's not animating, he's not chasing me. This feels like a statue, and functionally that's all it is right now. So let's talk about what we can do to get him moving. Today we're not talking so much about animations, like making it look like he's walking, or making it look like he's attacking, or wobbling around, idling. We're going to get him actually moving around, like following the player, chasing us, trying to reach us. And we're going to make it so that he'll only notice us when we're within a certain range. So if we're on the other side of the world, he's not going to just inherently know where we are and start moving towards us. We'll have to be within a certain range for him to notice and then start moving towards us. Now to do this, we're going to write some code, but that code needs to interact with a few things. Right now, this zombie is just a model with an animator attached uh, the animator still needs some things hooked up to actually start working, but we're going to skip past that for now. We'll get to that next time. And for right now, we're actually going to add a new component. And this component is going to help our zombie figure out where to go and what to do in certain situations. This component I've already started to search for here. You can see I typed in NAV, which is the beginning of navigation, which is what we are working with here is a nav mesh agent. So I'm going to give my zombie a nav mesh agent. This nav mesh agent will allow our zombie to do things like navigate around this terrain without bumping into trees or walking into walls and things like that. It will also prevent him from climbing a really steep mountain or walking into the ocean because especially with something like a zombie, their movement options should be somewhat limited. 
you saw a zombie climbing straight up the face of a mountain, it wouldn't make much sense, especially if they were just using their stumbling animation. But this nav mesh agent actually needs one more thing before it knows how to interact with our terrain. We need to put a nav mesh on our terrain. So this nav mesh agent interacts with a nav mesh. So let's click on our terrain and set up our nav mesh. You can select it by clicking on it in the scene or in the hierarchy. But with our terrain selected, we're going to go over to the right of inspector and to the right of services, and we're going to click on this navigation tab. If you don't see this navigation tab, don't freak out. Just come up here and click on window, and then go almost all the way down to navigation. And that will bring that tab up for you. Next, it might sound a little odd, but we're going to go to bake. And here on bake, you can see this little diagram here. So this is referring to the nav mesh agent that is on the zombie. So when we see this little step here, and it says 0.4, this means that that zombie can stumble up any step that's 0.4 units high, which is pretty reasonable, I think. And when we see this little slope here, this means that the zombie will be able to climb up any slope that's at a 45 degree angle or less. If it gets up to a 50 or a 60 or a 90 degree angle, well, the zombie won't be able to climb walls, and that's probably a good thing. Now, you can change these settings pretty easily. I can take this slider here, and if I want my zombie to be even clumsier, they won't be able to go up anything past like say a 15 degree slope or something like that. So maybe I will take this down to like 40 so my zombie isn't too agile. And the same thing with the step, the step height at 0.4. If I wanted to make this zombie a little bit clumsier, a little less agile, I could put that down to 0.3 or 0.2 or whatever you want. But for now, that's all you need to know about this. Next, we're going to click bake. And that is going to create this nav mesh all over your entire terrain. Now, the bigger and more complex your terrain is, the longer this might take. You'll notice after I click it down here in the bottom right, I get this little blue loading bar that says exporting tiles. So I'm going to wait for this to finish. And when it is finished, what I should see is a bunch of blue shapes pop up all over my terrain. The exception to that should be around the trees. There should be some little gaps where the zombie can't travel. So he won't just bump into a tree or get stuck on a tree and keep walking into it, he'll see it coming and navigate around it. Zombies aren't that bright, but they usually do know how to get around without just, but they do know how to get around without just walking into a wall over and over. So we'll make them at least that competent. Okay, and there you have it. You can see everywhere that the zombie is allowed to move. So aside from seeing these blank spots around trees where the zombie will see the tree coming and navigate around it, you'll also see some parts on the hill where the zombie will get towards the hill and realize that this is too steep and that he won't be able to climb up something this steep and that he needs to go around those areas. And when the player playing the game realizes something like that, they can start to use it to their advantage using trees as cover or the hills to buy time as they try to evade the zombies. But everywhere that you can see that blue mesh is somewhere that our zombie is allowed to go. Now, just because we gave our zombie a nav mesh agent and put a nav mesh on the terrain, doesn't mean that he actually knows where to go or when to go there yet. You can see for now, despite those changes, our zombie is still fairly dim-witted and doesn't really know how to interact with us or anything else in the environment. So now it's time to start writing some code that will fix that. But we'll cover that in the next video.